Creeds are important when it comes to your hunter. There are five different creeds that you can select, and they are supposed to represent your hunter's worldview, how they approach problem solving. Upholding a creed is a way of life, and when you're dealing with people who are not supernatural hunters, don't care about the supernatural, it also helps them find common ground to just talk to regular people. In this video, we're going to talk about the entrepreneurial creed from Hunter the Reckoning, the new 5th edition version of the game, as well as the hunter who follows this way of life. Hunting monsters doesn't have to be all serious and depressing all the time. It can also be business. A hunter with the entrepreneurial creed really takes this to heart. They prefer to bring innovation and business to the hunt. The entrepreneurial toolbox includes everything from proprietary hunting methods for specific supernatural beings, experimental prototypes for new technologies, new weapons, as well as supernatural regents either for defense or offense. The hunt not only serves to reduce the amount of horrifying creatures that go bump in the night, it is also the perfect testing ground for research and development. When it comes to benefits of being entrepreneurial, the obvious one, of course, is going to be new technologies. The hunter is able to create advantages over their quarry through their own due diligence, their own research, or maybe even because they were able to acquire a proprietary hunting method for a specific type of creature. And of course, you can make a decent profit selling information that only you have. When it comes to drawbacks, the new technologies, these new weapons, these resources, they don't care who uses them. So if your technology or your weapon, whatever it is, falls into the wrong hands, it can absolutely be used against you, be that by any one of the other organizations or even supernatural creatures themselves. Unlike some of the other supernatural threats that exist, vampires and werewolves are not dumb. And sometimes new technologies are just unproven and they can blow up in your face. Entrepreneurs are risk takers. They are inventors, they are problem solvers, and quite commonly they operate in the morally gray areas. Sometimes they are able to improve on existing traditions for better effectiveness, and sometimes they can scrap tradition entirely for something else that just works better. Many hunters with the entrepreneurial creed come from highly disciplined backgrounds, military service, business executives, science laboratories, anywhere that has a protocol that is very rigorous and must be adhered to. There are also the home inventors, the garage enthusiasts. They're always ready to make a buck. While the entrepreneur is solution oriented, they are not always profit oriented. Profit to them could still come in the form of a new technology, expanding a research idea that they had. There is no denying that they are incredibly resourceful, but if you can get paid for making the world a better place, then that's just an added bonus. Now there are a few problems when it comes to the entrepreneurial hunter, things that you should definitely be on the lookout for. The first one that could be a potential problem is a lack of morality, usually stemming from those who want results at any cost. Collateral damage is just part of the job, and that collateral damage could be civilian lives, it could also be members of your hunter cell, or somebody else's hunter cell. To some in the entrepreneurial creed, any of these losses are acceptable risks. Going beyond the moral problems for an entrepreneurial hunter, something else that can cause problems with them is their experimental technology. Yes, it absolutely can be useful, but the only place to test a new weapon, a new technology, a new regent is in the field. Should these prototypes be lost or damaged or even worse, turned against the hunter and their cell, this can cause significant problems, especially if the hunter themselves are reliant solely on their technology and not some of their own skills. Having tools and fun technology is great, as long as you are not solely reliant on them. A third danger for the entrepreneurial hunter is that of becoming singular minded. And what I mean when I say this, someone who's trying to develop a new technology, expand their research, they can become singular minded and singular focused on this that nothing else matters. In this event, trying to capture supernatural beings, supernatural threats, because using parts of that being are required to advance their ideas, advance their research. This can become a capture at all costs. 
And even worse still, if a capture is successful, but the hunters, the cell doesn't realize what they've got or the entrepreneur isn't prepared for the effects of this being, who's to say that a vampire can't enter the mind and make the hunter do something they wouldn't otherwise normally do? Or even the threat of supernatural curses that the hunters are unprepared for or ill-equipped to deal with. There's just something to be said for the simplicity of a dead vampire that can't create problems anymore. Entrepreneurial hunters often go into a hunt with the mindset of capture or observe rather than kill. But they're not unreasonable. If a supernatural threat is legitimately murderous, then of course, they're gonna strive to take it down. With this information and technology, these tactics can be developed and sold to the highest bidder or the highest paying hunting party. And the entrepreneur is often the most adaptable when it comes to the hunt. They can adjust to any situation quickly. They can improvise on the fly, especially when they're going into a situation that has no specific playbook. There are no instructions. Through their methods, they can over time develop a plan of attack or wing it and hope it works. Now there are some classic archetypes that exist for the entrepreneur that you may want to embody for your character. The full-time part-timer. What this means is your hunter has one, two, sometimes three jobs during the day, but during the night, they are a part-time hunter. The day jobs provide just enough money to pay for their general living expenses, and then by night, they apply the excess towards their research, towards their technologies, ultimately improving their craft. The contract broker is someone often connected, well-connected, to the hunter world and even the real world. They're very likely the reason a hunter cell has equipment and they're getting paid for doing a job for corporations or organizations. They do walk a fine line between truth and lying or lie through omission. And that goes for both dealing with the normies as well as other hunters. There is also the influencer. This is exactly what it sounds like. Someone who goes out hunting for the ghost stories, the supernatural, and posting their videos online. And if it's not going directly online, they are selling the videos to organizations, corporations, hunter cells who will pay for them. Rip Ghost Hunter 69. And just so we're all clear, if I was a ghost hunter, I would absolutely crap my pants. And then of course you have the club promoter. These are folks who are well connected within the night scene. They live it, they breathe it. They know that at night, certain monsters exist. They go on the prowl, especially around places where humans like to let loose. They will often work behind the scenes through their own clubs or through their network of people. And they work to get rid of these threats as well as protect the veil at all times. Now, if you are interested in learning more about Hunter the Reckoning, I have a video on the screen for you now. Thank you to my patrons who voted on the video topic today. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.